Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, it's great to see you all again for another uh, episode of Celebrating Act 2. We're with Dr. Liz Lister, our, uh, I don't want to say resident expert because she's not a resident. She's like a full-fledged doctor. And um, <laughs> my great partner, John Coleman. How are you doing, folks? Good, Art. Right. Uh, yeah, Dr. Liz, you've done your residency a long time ago, I think. Long time ago. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have to say, let's no. see. I finished medical school over 30 years ago. Oh, my goodness. Don't admit that. So, you yeah. Know hey. That's terrific. Hey, it's badge. Badge of... Yeah, I, badge. we'd love to have you as a resident doctor for celebrating <laughs> Act Two, but I don't think we can afford you, so... Hey, um, I have a cousin and another relative, both, both women, who've had their thyroid out for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And all they do is have to take a pill. I, I'm, first of all, I don't know much about the thyroid, but it surprises me that you could have any major gland taken out and replaced by a pill. And, it, you know, it's not like losing a breast or losing a lung or losing an arm. I mean, is this not an important um, gland? Why is it so easy to take it out? Sure, 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 sure. Wonderful question. It actually is a very important gland. And luckily, the discoveries have been made to be able to replenish thyroid hormone either when the thyroid gland is not making enough of the hormones or if for any reason it needs to be re removed. Okay. So when I talk, you know, you know, you guys know me. I always love to talk about hormones and the hormone side of health. And so when we talk about all the different kinds of hormones that are in our bodies, thyroid, if we compare those different hormones to the different sections of an orchestra and a symphony, the thyroid is actually the conductor. Mm. So uh -huh. a person can live without their thyroid, but it's not a very nice quality of life. It's much, much better being able to now that we have all these ways to replenish the thyroid hormone in order to have the quality of life and have all of the other hormones functioning uh, at their best. They all interact with each other and they all interact with thyroid. So you said yeah. it, it's like a conductor. It's, yes. what is a, uh, maybe you could explain a little bit more what the thyroid does. Does it produce something that makes your hands move and makes your heart beat or uh, or does it work in a different way in the body? So the thyroid is located right here. It's a little butterfly shape. This has the lobes on either side with a little bridge across the middle. And it produces an inactive hormone, which is usually referred to as T4. We should come back to those numbers. We'll talk about those because that's another interesting feature of thyroid hormones. It has to convert into the active form, which is T3. All right, so the T, that conversion happens in a few different places in the body. It happens in the thyroid, in the liver, in the muscle tissue, in the brain. There are uh, quite a few different areas so that our cells then get that T3, which goes into the bloodstream, travels all around. It influences so many functions, especially essential functions to how we feel. So people who don't have enough thyroid hormone are, are maybe going to feel tired, their gut is not going to work well. They may feel constipated. Everything slows down. All right, so fatigue, weight gain, constipation, dry skin, dry hair, hair loss. I'm naming all the most common ones that I can think of. There are more because thyroid hormone influences muscle function. Okay, so for example, with our vision, all the little tiny muscles around the eyes respond as do all the other muscles in our bodies uh, to thyroid hormone so if we have if we don't have enough which is more common in women than men by the way we can have any of those symptoms and more it's kind of interesting i um uh i, I didn't know that but i have to say that uh, uh, i have an annual checkup and certainly from since i've been 50 i literally have gone at least once a year sometimes twice a year and have lab work. And my 
thyroid never came up to do they generally test for it and everything is fine so they don't tell me about it or do they not test for it until you come in and indicate that you've got some kind of problem that might be thyroid related I would say you probably have had one particular test for thyroid function during some of those regular checkups. And that test is known as the TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. That is a hormone released by an area of the brain that travels to the thyroid to tell it to produce the thyroid hormones. So when the thyroid is sluggish and not responding and not making enough hormones, the brain perceives that and releases more TSH. So a higher TSH leads is, is indicating low thyroid function. And just for everybody to be aware, because this is a common question that I get, hypo is low. That's how I remember it. Hypo is low. Hypothyroidism is low thyroid function. And hyper, hyper or hyperthyroidism is the opposite. Everything is over revved. People feel jittery. They feel palpitations. They get diarrhea. It's the opposite. And they also just simply don't feel well. Hypothyroidism is much, much more common than hyperthyroidism. And in hypothyroidism, it's eight times as common in women as it is in men. Really? Wow. Yes. How, how treatable is it? Extremely. Oh, very, good. very treatable. I think, unfortunately, most people are treated with T4, <clears throat> which is usually unnamed like levothyroxine or that, that type of name of that hormone. Mm. And it is supposed to convert, <clears throat> excuse me, into the T3, into the active form. And it doesn't always do that effectively. So if a person is taking thyroid hormone replenishment and they're still having symptoms of hypothyroidism, it's probably not their imagination. They probably need maybe a little bit of a different form of the medication or an adjustment of the dose. Mm. So it's really a, a, a gland, a hormone that affects the whole body. And d do you find symptoms elsewhere that your um, thyroid is not working it's symptoms from the kidney symptoms from the liver i mean things like that do yes yeah that's an interesting question well i will say for example in women a very common presentation of low thyroid is in women that are before menopause is irregular menstrual periods so or pms all of these can be related can have a, a bit of a thyroid component depression can have a thyroid component. In fact, in my opinion, it usually does. Interesting. It sounds like to me that thyroid, because it's it, it, it sounds like thyroid problems are hard to diagnose, are they? Not really. Luckily, we have the TSH. On the downside, most doctors only check the TSH. And this mm. is a particular test that's especially susceptible to the normal range problem. So when um, I have patients who tell me that their levels were in the, the doctor said that it was, everything was normal, but they're still feeling tired or gaining weight or having these kinds of symptoms related to hypothyroidism. This is definitely the case where it's barely inside the range and the doctor tells them that it's fine. So yeah. that, that is a little, it's a little bit of a problem to only check the TSH, but it's not difficult to detect between symptoms and also the testing that we have available. Okay. But um, people are probably more likely to get uh, a, a recognition of their problem from somebody like you who specializes in it than from their uh, GP who might look, oh, well, you're feeling tired and sluggish. Uh, they go down a list of things and they may try to eliminate a whole bunch of other things first before even testing sure. you for that. It's not the kind of thing that... So it's important to know that uh, being your own advocate, uh, as we, you really need to be, right. uh, no matter how well-intentioned yeah. uh, your, uh, well, I call them GP, they call them family doctors now, I guess, uh, that your, uh, your doctor that you normally visit may not be aware of it because it's lower down the totem pole of issues. Right. 
So either ask right, about it right. or, or uh, contact Dr. Liz. Absolutely. I'm always happy to answer questions. I wanted to mention, we talked about T4 and T3. The T4 is the inactive and the T3 is the active. The, those numbers represent the number of iodine atoms that are tacked onto the molecule. So T4 has four and it converts into the active form by removing, one getting removed. So it's very important to have enough iodine. So this is kind of an interesting fact that not a lot of people are aware of at this point in time. But about 100 years ago, there was a big, big problem in this country, in the United States, with people having something called goiter. Goiter is a lack of iodine, and the thyroid becomes very enlarged, visibly enlarged. And so in 1924, the U.S. government took it upon itself to add iodine to salt. To salt? Mm. You mean to iodized salt. salt? You got it. That's well, exactly right. Why does that right. Was to prevent the salt from sticking to the little grains from sticking together? No? Nope. That is why iodine was introduced and added oh. to salt in order to treat goiter. Wow. Luckily, and it worked. It worked really, really well. Now, nowadays, hmm. there's a trend away from iodized salt, right? Away from regular table salt. People are using Himalayan salt, the natural sea salt, that type of thing. And so I, it's very common for me to see people with low iodine levels. And it's also very easy to supplement. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. Great stuff. A very, very surprising uh, look at um, something that I never really thought about before. Well, thank John, the thank you for asking yeah. me the question, because the last time I thought about thyroids was this time. It's just nothing that's ever comes up. So thank you, John. And thank you, Dr. Liz. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.